Division number 20. I'm going to show some long division. When we've got a big number, like 365, we know it can't fit into the, into the 3. We're trying to fit this number into this number. So we ask ourselves, can it fit into the 3? <laughs> no, there's no way. Can it fit into the 36? No, there's no way. But can 365 fit into a 367? Yes, if you look at it, it actually can fit in there one time, right? And it's even going to have a couple left over. So 365 fits into the 367 one time. So because we're putting it into the 367, our 1 goes above the 7. See? It didn't fit into here. It didn't fit into here. It fit into here. So that's where the 1 is going to go. All right? We do our multiplication, 365 times 1, and we put it underneath the 367. We do our subtraction, and we can see that 7 take away 5 is 2. So now it's the 8's turn to come down, right? So he's going to come down here, and we ask ourselves, can 365 fit into 28? No, it can't. So what we do in this case is we give a zero above here because it fits in zero times. We brought the 8 down. We tried to see if the 365 fit into it, and it didn't. It fits in zero times. We put a zero up here, and now it's the 9's turn to come down. Can 365 fit into 289? No, it can't. So we put another zero here. Now there's two ways we could do this. We can either say that the answer is 100 with a remainder of 289 over 365 because we can write this as a fraction with this as the denominator and this as the numerator. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to keep going by adding a decimal point here. If we had a decimal point here, then we go into our tenths. We extend the division problem out. We bring the zero down. And now we ask ourselves, can 365 fit into 2,890? Yes, it can. But how many times? So we can do a little math on the side. 365 is about, what, three of them in a thousand? And we've got 2,800. So I'm going to guess six, I'm going to guess eight. I'm going to multiply by eight. That's my guess. So I do multiplication on the side. It's 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. 24 and 5 is 29. Look at that. It's too big, but I know it's going to be 7 because it's about 100 too big. So I know this is going to be a decimal point here and a 7. Keep our decimal points lined up, okay? So let's try taking, we can either do take 365 away from this, and then it would be 7. It would be 1 less than 8. Or we can just do 365 times 7. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 6 is 42. 43, 44, 45. 7 times 3 is 21. And 4 more is 25. It comes out to 2,555. So we put that here. We do our subtraction. Zero from five, take away five, we can't do it, so we have to borrow from the nine. It becomes an eight, and that becomes a ten. That's five. Eight take away five is three. Eight take away five is three. And now we have 335 left over. So now if we want to, we can add another zero, or we can say our remainder, we can say our problem is... Uh, 100.7, and 
and 335 over 365 as a fraction. That's the numerator, that's the denominator. But we can also add another zero and keep going into decimals. How many times can this fit into this? Well, we know 29, 20 was eight times. What's nine times? Let's see what happens if we try it by nine. That's 45, 54, 59. It helps if you know your multiplication tables real well. That's 27 and five is 32. That'll fit. Nine is 3,295. So we could put a nine here. And we're going to put our 3295. And we're going to do subtraction. We can't have zero and take five away, so we have to borrow. Four take away nine, we can't do that either, right? So we have to borrow again. So now we have 14 take away 9, that's 5. 2 take away 2 is 0. 3 take away 3 is 0. Now, we either have a fraction again of 55 as the numerator and 365 as the denominator, or we can add another 0. And actually, we can keep going on forever by adding zeros and having the decimal. We could have 10 numbers past this de decimal if we wanted to, okay? So, if we stopped back here at the 100, if we stopped here, our answer would have been 100 with remainder, oops, sorry about that, it would have been 100 with remainder 289 over 365, okay? If we didn't add the zeros, that would have been the answer. 289 as the numerator and 365 as the denominator. Okay? We can keep on adding zeros as long as our decimal points are lined up nice and pretty on top of each other like that. And you can keep doing multiplication on the side and keep coming down, trying to get an even number if you want. Okay? When you have a number like this, where you can easily see there's a 287 and there's a 286. We know it can't fit into the 2, it can't fit into the 8, and it can't fit into this because it's just big by 1. It's just 1 too big. We have to go to this one. So my guess would be to do math on the side, 287 times 9. 9 times 7 is 63. That's 72. 78, we carry the 7, put the 8 down, that's 18, and 7 is 25. That would be 2583, that would be our subtraction, that would be a very big first one, wouldn't it? And the 9 would go up above here, because we didn't put it into the 2, or the 28, or the 286, we put it into the 2863, so it goes above the number, that shows that what we put it into, see? That would be zero. We'd have to borrow for that one. The nine would drop down. It would be the nine's turn, see? And then how many times can it fit into 2809? I'm going to have to go with nine again. And we can see that that would be 2583, we do our subtraction, and our answer would be 99, and our fraction, and our, we'd either have a remainder of 2, 2, 6, okay, or we could say it's 99 and 2, 2, 6 over 287. as a fraction, okay? So you could write your answer like this, or you could take this away and say it's 99 and remainder 226, okay? On this one, we can keep going and adding zeros forever, 
and making the decimal point extend past the 100, or we can stop right there and say that the answer is 100, remainder 289, or remainder 289 over 365. See? Either way. I hope this helps. And keep trying and look through my other videos in the division folder and maybe they'll help. Bye.